Great Debaters Contest is brought to you by Safaricom M-Pesa. Welcome to this very special episode of the Great Debaters Contest. I am Mariam Bishar. And I am Austin Nyembok. And today we have BG Gandu girls who are supposed to face off with Kenya High. Their opponents unfortunately pulled out. So my co-host Austin and myself, along with a member of our mentor program, Edward, will engage them so we can have a fruitful debate. So uh, today's motion is criminal justice should focus more on rehabilitation and less on punishment. Austin is our somewhat first proposer. Criminal justice. If you do something wrong, there are consequences. The justice system is actually based and founded on the principles of ensuring that individuals who go against the norms that defy or cont okay, who, that contradict or in perhaps maybe, you know, harm, <laughs> maybe harm an individual's moral rights is subject to punishment or some form of correction. However, what, is more, what I'd like to state is more important is that instead of just correcting an individual, how about we simply instill in, instill in, them, some, instill in them morals and values that would quote-unquote prevent them actually going back to doing what they were doing, which was wrong in the first place. So my basic advocation at this moment is that as individuals or as the, just, as the justice system in general, that we should really focus more on trying to improve the individual and actually changing and influencing the way this person interacts with everyone else in the society such that their personality can be, you know, quote unquote, reformed. So basically, in terms of using punishment of a method of conditioning a response, I basically think uh, we are losing track because at the end of the road, we are simply telling somebody what you've done is wrong and we're not exactly giving them what you're doing, what, you, what you're supposed to do and what is supposed to be right. And therefore, this individual at some, in, in, in essence, actually reaches a block because he knows this is wrong and he's been punished for it However, he doesn't know what he should do which is right and he will be awarded or rewarded for it. So my basic advocation, which I reiterate, is let us advocate for the justice system to actually have programs and methods of instilling and propagating reform and rehabilitation of these individuals who are in corrective, correction institutions. Thank you very much. First opposer, you have three minutes. There are two types of laws. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, just laws and unjust laws. Unjust laws include rehabilitating serial killers, rapists, and the like. Charlene Mungai from Bishop Katimu Gandu, opposing the motion that states, criminal justice shall focus more on rehabilitation and less on punishment. First of all, my worthy opponent, Austin, I'd like you to give us the methods of rehabilitation that you're trying to put across. To bring us all on board, criminal justice, the legal system, used to punish people who have committed crime. Rehabilitation is making someone acceptable after they've done something wrong in the society. While punishment is an act of making somebody suffer for something they have done wrong. May it be community service, probation. Uh, we have very many methods of punishment according to the UN law, even including assets for future. First, punishment has worked in the past. It is working and it will still act. Ask John Kiriamete why he will not go back to crime. This is because of the punishment he underwent. We have to give tough love to our criminals. Tell them this is what you did, it is wrong, and punish them for it. Based on our religious factors, more than 90% of the world society today is based on a certain religion. Christianity, for example, states clearly, spare the rod, spoil the child. Remember how your mother used to slap you, then the next day prepare you to go to church? That is what we need, a soothing balm to our society. 
Previous failure in countries like England, Wales, and Scotland should teach us a lot. They tried rehabilitation, and oh my God, it never worked. Try to bring rehabilitation to a person who's living below the poverty line in Kibera. Try to tell them to stop stealing. You're just talking to them. Trust me, it will go through in here and move out through the other ear. It will never work for those people. Rehabilitation gives us no assurance that the criminal will change. At least our prisons are making it better. They're making their lives better by teaching them more on adding to the punishment. That is what we need to do to our criminals. Talk to them as well as punish them more so that they realize that what they did was wrong. Rehabilitation mitigates crime. You know, you get this sense of, yes, I did something wrong. I'm just being talked to. I'm just being counseled, advised. You advise a serial killer who's killed 40 people and tell them that killing is wrong. Some plead insanity. How will you justify that their insanity is fake? By talking to them, they'll just think that these people are lunatics. They're talking to me and I am not insane. That is what we are saying by saying rehabilitation should be a method of correcting punishment. Rehabilitation incubates ignorance. That something you've done is not wrong. Research from www.guardian.com says that 70% of people who are rehabilitated go back to that crime. Why do they go back to that crime? Because they feel that rehabilitation is not enough. People, you have to look at Africa, Kenya in particular. Rehabilitation is just not the way to go. Punishment is the way to go. Thank you. First, uh, she asked us to give us the various forms of rehabilitation. We can talk about counseling as a very obvious ones, but most importantly, rehabilitation aims to reintegrate people into society as opposed to just keeping them outside and isolating them. That doesn't really deal with the intrinsic problem. Uh, statistically, more than half of the people who are in the penal system, who are in our correctional facilities, are repeat offenders. That means that the tradition, traditional forms of punishment that we have been using over time may not be as effective as we take them to be. Uh, we have severe problems of overcrowding in our prisons. Rehabilitation is a simple way to deal with this problem. For not so serious offenders, a few counseling sessions may be more helpful than perhaps three months in, prisons, uh, in prison. Sorry. I'd like to give an example of, say, drunk drivers or drug abusers. If I take you into the penal system, keep you in prison for, say, a year or more because you caused an accident while drunk driving, that doesn't really solve the problem of your maybe inherent alcoholism or whatever issue it is that drove you to, drunk, to drink and drive. So it may be more useful to you to take a few months in a counseling session, talk to some people, uh, maybe do some community service, and perhaps uh, get a better result out of it. And also I'd like to, us to think of criminals as human beings, not necessarily as offenders. Um, simply put, we have to look at the fact that crime is not necessarily committed out of want. So not necessity, but sometimes our circumstances may force us. Not every criminal in the justice system is there because they wanted to commit that crime. Not all of us are born um, from the same, at the same level, and some of us may be driven to do these things not because we want, but because our circumstances may force us in a way. So it may be more helpful to help us, to give us guidance, to give us perhaps new skills, masonry, carpentry, even if it's a formal education that you may not have gotten, as opposed to just incarcerating us and waiting for a, a miracle to happen. Prisons tend to isolate people. The longer I stay in a prison, the more I tend to become a criminal. This is because I'm I'm outside the normal world. I don't interact with my family, my friends as much as I used to. I'm simply locked up in a room or in a large hall with people who are considered my kind. What happens? We validate each other. We talk to each other, say, you know what? We did this because we had to. We did this because it was right. Those who may not have been born criminals may become criminals in those prisons or in those correctional facilities. So it may be better to give them counseling, to, help, to have them interact with the outside world, and uh, in this way they grow better than as opposed to just isolating them. One of the basic principles of rehabilitation is to maintain contact with the outside world, as opposed to isolating criminals and just keeping them off, keeping people of their kind uh, together, lumping them all. So I think um, that's basically it, but I'd like to emphasize the high rate of repeat offenders who have gone through the penal systems and who have been punished in the more traditional forms. The second opposer, you may give your rebuttal. You also have three minutes. My name is Grace Washanga from Bishop Gatimugandu.
opposing this motion that states that criminal justice should focus on rehabilitation and less on punishment. First, I'd like to counter what the second speaker said about the drunk people that they should be taken through rehabilitation rather than punishing them. Well, in my view, once this drunk driver has sobered up, he deserves a nice punishment, like a fine, that the next time he wants to drink and drive, he will remember the amount of money that he paid for that. Rather than you taking him through rehabilitation, talk to him about this, and the next time he, get a temp he gets a temptation to do it, he'll know that the consequence is just being talked to. Dr. Hanbar discovered the crime gene. A crime gene is a hormone that gives one a desire to commit crime. What does this mean? That some people are actually born with crime in them. So it will not be correct to actually take these people through rehabilitation and try to remove what is natural inside them. No. Take them through punishment. Let them know the consequence of doing what these they feel that they desire so much to do. Punish, punishment reduces crime rates. Robert Wiener said that. If you want to reform people, if you want to reform a criminal, make prison a place they do not want to go back to. I'd like to talk to all the gents in this room. Well, in Dubai, there are corporal punishments, such as removal of the limb, of a limb, if you steal. Now for the men, if you are Adam, and God decided not to put you in sleep, but instead ask you, I would like to remove a limb in you and create a woman. How many would agree? So have creating fear through the punishments that are there is going to make people avoid crime. Rehabilitation of petty crimes is very uneconomical. Someone peed on the street and is taken through rehabilitation. Trainers are paid to rehabilitate someone who peed on the street. How? The government can use that money to teach someone who lacks money to pay for such courses. Let this person go through something else, a punishment like, you know, community service. So, mine is just the voice of knowledge. And a very good businessman once said, the greatest investment is investing in knowledge. So please, let us invest in knowledge. Thank you. Tenga kila kuchao Kusota sisoti tena Nina zo savings Zina weza niendelesha Kutuma pesa Hakuna paperwork Safari com Mwatu jenga Zakalezi mepita Na sito songa mbele Safari com Take part in the M challenge by sending your short song, rap, or poem about Safaricom M Pesa on WhatsApp, and you could win 1,000 shillings in Safaricom airtime. Questions for the proposers? Joseph Kamau from Olympic High School. What better way are you going to give us to stop the tendency to go back to crime? Thank you. Question for the opposers. Mark from Olympic High School. Now, I would like to ask the opposers a very simple question. You have said that punishment is better than rehabilitation. Now, someone has committed murder and we are all under our Christian ethics, which among the Ten Commandments do not commit murder. Now, the victim is given a sentence of death. Is that committing a second degree murder? Should the judge even be, the judge also should be penalized for judging the accused to death? Thank you. Now you have the third proposal. Rehabilitation over punishment is simply a question of transformation over isolation. Or uh, in another case, it's either a second chance to someone 
or their destiny. You see people put in life imprisonment, for example, right? So this person knows that he doesn't have a chance to make another way for himself. Yet, there are examples I can give, like right here in Kenya, where uh, I watched in Citizen TV, where there was actually a prisoner who became a lawyer. Now, as a lawyer, he was able to like change the whole scope of his prison environment. Because I could recall him getting a better room, getting a better bed, getting better food. Now, our opponents mentioned that the greatest investment is an investment in education. Isn't that an investment in education? Maybe not for the person who was outside, but, does, but don't the people who have already uh, been sentenced to a, a different kind of lifestyle deserve a second chance to correct themselves? That's basically it. Another thing is our opponents talked about money, like knowing that you smoke cigarettes or drink alcohol, and therefore when you know that you're going to be fined for Oh, not cigarettes rather, but alcohol, such as the alcohol blow. When you know you're going to be fined or arrested, uh, that means that you'll, you'll be transformed. First of all, rehabilitation is transformation. And also, money won't, t won't make a transformation. I can recall a time when I was a child when a cigarette was two shillings, then it was hiked up to three shillings, then it was hiked up to five shillings, and still there are cigarette smokers. Therefore, money is simply a cure for the urge. So transforming is simply showing a person where the, showing them the health risks, showing them people who have suffered physically, not just giving them a PowerPoint presentation of a person who has taken a drug over and over and over again, and we've seen the effects. Therefore, I still believe that rehabilitation should come be over punishment. However, punishment does also work, but in some cases we have seen it go to the extreme. For example, I recall a time when I was a child and I watched the news of a prison inmate uh, I believe it was in committee, maximum prison, uh, where he, he had a phone, illegally of course, but he recorded prisoners like lying down naked being punished by the prison wardens, which is very unfair. Therefore, you should give people rehabilitation because at least they are guaranteed a safe chance, a second chance, and a chance to transform their own lives, rewrite their own stories, and not just be pushed or be forced to live in, uh, in a certain cocoon instead of changing. Thank you. The third opposer. The course of the world is changed by those who dare to dream. Some dream of life, other dreams of prosperity. I, Maureen Modoni from Bishop Gatimu Gandu, dream of a life full of change. That is why I strongly oppose the motion that states that criminal justice should focus more on rehabilitation and less on punishment. I'd like also to remind you that when we talk about punishment, in our motion, we did not say that we should fully focus on punishment. No. We did not say that. Let us punish these people and also give a little bit of rehabilitation. The, the other gentleman who asked a question about the Ten Commandments and, asked, and God asked the judge punishing that person for the sins they have committed. You understand the Bible very well. I also do. And the Bible says that authority comes from God. All authority comes from God. In the same line of thought, the same God watched us make the Constitution and I believe it is he who is guiding us in the ruling. So we cannot say that the judge should go to prison because he has sentenced somebody to murder. Was he sentenced on an unfair grounds? I highly doubt. Rehabilitation encourages crime. From his book, A Life in War and Peace, Kofi Annan speaks about the pool of poverty in Kenya. He says that 55% of Kenyans are living below the poverty line. This means that they are living and earning less than a dollar a day. This leaves me with a question. Why wouldn't I commit a crime and end up in prison where I'd get free food and training? The ladies and I were watching the Nairobi Stock Exchange over breakfast today and we realized that the dollar was going for 89 Kenyan shillings. 89 Kenyan shillings and somebody is learning that a day. As per the Kenyan law, it is, if you pee on the streets, you get a six month imprisonment and a re rehabilitation course in which you're going to learn horticulture. Now, it's this simple. If I was earning that little, and again I was broke, what do you think I'd do? Then what makes you think I wouldn't be on the streets of Nairobi when after six months I will graduate from a horticultural course? In the same line of thought, some crimes cannot be rehabilitated. If we are going for a method which will be used to enforce justice, let us go for a method that serves the whole society. I am yet to meet as somebody who committed a crime against humanity. 
and got rehabilitated. In the same line of thought, I'm here to meet a poacher or a drug trafficker who was rehabilitated. It cannot work for everybody. Section 565-020 of the UN law states that first degree murder for under 16 is life imprisonment. For anybody above that age, you finally, you are assured to get life imprisonment and hung actually without eligibility for probation, parole, release, except by the Act of Parliament. In conclusion, I am currently in the age of majority, though young, definitely not naive. I know my rights. I sure know one thing, that criminal justice should emphasize more on punishment and less on rehabilitation. Thank you. For the final submissions from the proposing side. I believe Austin and myself are not in the business of denying facts. We do see the need for punishment and we do not think that it should be exclusive of rehabilitation. Uh, cases like Osama or other really big psychopathic terrorists, we're not saying these people um, should just be exclusively rehabilitated. We want our justice system to focus more on the problems that are within. The punishment more often than not is just sweeping dirt under the rug as opposed to actually dealing with problems. So that's what we want to see more of. We want to see us deal with the actual issues behind the crime as opposed to just reacting to the crimes after they happen. The criminal justice system is a jigsaw puzzle and it's very special in the sense that the piece that does not fit, you have the option of crafting it to fit or leaving it outside and expecting it to fit itself. So should we rehabilitate? and allow it to fit in the society, or should we just simply correct and let it end there and wait for catastrophe? We can now have the closing submissions of the opposition. One of our judges is left-handed, and left-handed people are more affected by the crime gene. So if they take the side of rehabilitation, I don't really see where this brings us to. So we have proven that punishment is better, cheaper, and desirable. We do not take it that we are banishing punishment, as rehabilitation is actually a form of punishment. So in all in all, today we are talking about punishment. Everything has a bright side, and everything has its beauty. But not everybody sees it. Professor Goodhart once told a criminal offender, I am not punishing you because you stole a goat. I am punishing you because I do not want that goat to be stolen again. That is what we are standing for. The voice of justice, the voice of reason. We should punish these criminals and eradicate criminals in the world. We killed Saddam Hussein. He cannot come back to the world. Rehabilitate him. He is still there in the world. I hope I will be remembered for a problem I helped solve. Thank you. I want to commend Austin, uh, Mariam, and Edward because they were not prepared for this. And I think they did best under, their best under the circumstances. I think Edward was the better team member, uh, was more composed, and gave examples. However, all his examples were drawn from programs that he has watched. Uh, we were hoping that you'd have much more than that. But I mean, all the best. I think the question here is whether rehabilitation is the better option or punishment is the better option. I love punchy submission by Shalene, equally punchy submissions by Grace, and equally punchy submissions by Maureen. Uh, Shalene, Grace, and Maureen, yes. The three form great team. Bishop Gatimu Gandu Girls got 72.3%. Please give them a hand. The not so great team of myself, Austin and Edward had 42.3, give us a hand. So from all of us here at the Great Debaters Contest, I am your host, Austin Nyambok. And I am Mariam Bishar, we'll see you next time. Contest was brought to you by Safaricom Mpesa.